Hello everybody and welcome to the Netbird YouTube channel. What we're going to be doing in this one is using this Raspberry Pi here to have access to our entire home network. The reason we're doing this with a Raspberry Pi today is it's a pretty easy process. These devices are relatively affordable and they are extremely efficient when it comes to power consumption. Meaning with Netbird, you could set this up as a routing peer, plug it into your network switch, modem, whatever it may be, and use it to access just about everything else on that subnet. And of course, I will note, you don't have to use a Raspberry Pi to do this, just about any computer will do the trick. But generally speaking, you are gonna have a better experience if the device can be on all the time, which is why this is great, low power. And being that this runs headless, meaning I don't have to have a keyboard and mouse plugged into it all the time, it just stays online and I can easily access it with SSH. If you already have some sort of NAS, home server, or even a mini PC like this, those are also great options. Netbird can be installed on just about anything. As with Linux, there's a single line installation script, or you can run it in Docker. Now, the Raspberry Pi I have here is a Pi 5 with eight gigs of RAM. This, even for what we're doing today, is overkill. The Netbird agent itself uses very minimal resources, so with a Pi this powerful, I can actually do quite a few other things with it, install other home lab type services, but you could get a pretty cheap Pi. And you may notice this one has a little extra thing on it. This is called a Pi hat. This gives this Pi the ability to power itself with PoE, meaning I only have to have one cable plugged into it, and it has a spot for an NVMe SSD, which is incredibly faster than running off of an SD card. Granted, if you just have an SD card, run a Netbird, you're gonna be more than fine. I'm not gonna talk too much more about the hat, that's not what the video is about, so I am gonna talk about installing this on a SD card. I'm simply gonna plug this SD card into my computer and head over to the Raspberry Pi website, and we're gonna go ahead and grab the Pi Imager. Luckily, I already have it on here, but the download link will be down below. If your Pi is already set up, you can skip this step. But again, this is gonna be the Pi 5. Go ahead and select your model, and then the operating system. Now, I mentioned earlier that for doing a server, headless is usually better. You could put whatever you want on it. This is gonna work fine for just about anything. But for me, I'm gonna go other general purpose OS. I like Ubuntu purely out of familiarity, but if you have more experience with a different operating system, go ahead and choose that. This will work on all Linux distributions. And for Ubuntu, I like to go with the LTS versions. So let's go with the Ubuntu Server 2404 release. Let's hit next. And now for the storage, I'm gonna go ahead and select that SD card. If you have an NVMe hat like this, if you have a way to do it, you could plug the NVMe itself directly into your system and flash it that way. Otherwise, follow the instructions for the hat that you have. So from there, let's go next. And now we have some customization. This machine is going to be multi-purpose. It's bigger specs, so I could do other things with it. So I'm gonna give it a host name of Ubuntu Pi. So from there, we could go next. We have a interesting combination here of capital city and time zone. Very interesting way to ask me what country I'm in. There it is, Washington DC, US, next. Obviously, pick the things that are best for you. We can give it a username and a password, just makes the whole setup process much easier. We'll go next. For Wi-Fi, I'm not going to select anything. It's always better to plug it in directly with Ethernet if possible. So I'll just go next. We are gonna to want to enable SSH. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and that's how we're gonna to connect to it. Password is fine for now. We could go next and now it's gonna write it. So all you do, click write. Do note, if there's anything important on this SD card, you're gonna to wanna to back that up first cause it is now gone. Type in our password, allow it, and there we go. And with the power of video editing, it is done. I have it in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into my rack so we can sign into it. So your username at that IP address, hit enter. Yes, this is our server. Type in your password and we're good to go. Ignore the fact that the host name's a little bit different there. I'm just running off of the uh, SSD I already had on it. Flashing that SSD was for demo purposes. Now, I don't already have Netbird on here, that's good. So the first thing that you're gonna want to do whenever you first install Ubuntu or really any other Linux distro is update the system. And that could be done with a sudo apt update as well as a sudo apt upgrade. Now it's been a while since this machine was updated, so it might take it a minute. What you can see, we have a good amount of things to update here. So we are gonna hit enter to continue and actually run all of these updates. And just like that, it is done. So our Pi at this point is technically ready to go ahead and get Netbird set up. Right here, we have the login for Netbird. It's really easy to go ahead and create an account 
And if it's your first time creating an account, I'll actually walk you through a onboarding process. I'll link to a separate video in our documentation so you can see that. And here we go, I'm signed in. This is a relatively fresh Netbird account. So I don't have any groups, policies, or anything like that. So I'll be starting from scratch. Now, probably the easiest way to set up a headless server is just with a setup key. So if we head over to our setup keys, this will give you a one-time key, or I'll show you to customize it, but a key that you can use to connect your Netbird peer to your management dashboard here. So I'm gonna create a setup key. This is gonna be for my Pi 5. If I was setting up multiple servers, I could make it reusable, but we're gonna make this a one-time key, and I might as well auto-assign this to a group. So this peer will have the specific group of Ubuntu Pi. You could call it whatever you want, home lab, home network, anything, but we'll just go Ubuntu Pi for this group and we'll go ahead and create our setup key. Now here it's gonna display the key, but if we click this install Netbird button, we will get the commands that we're gonna to need to get this connected. So first I'm gonna copy this command right here, which is just a sh script to go ahead and install Netbird and everything else that we're gonna to need to get this going. So let's hit enter and there we go. Starting just about everything and pretty quick, it's going to be done. While it finishes that, we're gonna grab the run Netbird command which includes the setup key that we just generated. So if I copy that, paste it on in, hit enter, in a matter of seconds, it is going to say connected, just like that. So if we go back over here, close this out, go to our peers, we should see the Pi 5 connected right here. If I open this up, we have a bunch of information about this specific peer. I'm gonna go ahead and rename it real fast. This is my Ubuntu Pi. So then later on, if I wanted to, if I wanted to actually connect to this, I could just use this DNS name if I'm connected with Netbird. Let's save that. Here you can do a lot of things. We can enable SSH access, which is really cool, kind of a new feature. SSH is now authenticated with your identity. If you wanna learn more about that, you could click the little eye or the little pop-up of the video right now. But we're just gonna get this set up. So we're gonna skip that for now. And what we're actually gonna to want to do is go ahead and create a network and actually set this up as a routing peer. So at the moment, we could connect directly to the Raspberry Pi itself with a WireGuard peer-to-peer -peer connection but we can't use it to see other devices on our subnet. And even if I go down here, there's a bunch of different Netbird commands that you could use. So if I did like Netbird status, we could see a lot of that information here, including the Netbird IP, the name, and the actual networks associated with this device. And in this case, we can see none. So let's go ahead and fix that by heading on over to networks. Here, we're gonna create a new network. This is going to be my home office network. Again, title it, describe it as you see fit. So let's add that network. And here it's gonna go through the kind of process to get everything we want set up for us. So we're gonna add a resource. Now this is gonna be a specific IP address. Now we could set up a whole subnet. You could point it to specific machines and then from there configure policies and access control as granular as you want it to be. But for this example, we're just gonna do our entire subnet. So I'll call this something like main subnet. We could skip description. And for my subnet, yours is probably gonna be a little bit different. Yours might start with uh, 192. Mine starts with 10, 173, 10, and we're gonna go zero. Since it's the entire subnet, we're gonna give it the mask of 24, which is for the entire IP range there. And now for destination group. When we create a policy in just a minute, this is the group that we're going to allow certain users to connect to to access this resource. Right now we can see I have Ubuntu Pi, I have an all group, but I'm gonna add this one to a subnet group. So just like that, I can enable the resource and we can add the resource. Now it's asking us if we'd like to create a policy. Let's go ahead and do that. For the source, I am going to give this to the admin group. It's probably already there. I deleted it when I was clearing this account. I'll add it to my user in just a minute and show you how to do that. But the source is gonna be our administrator group, so our user group for the admins, and then our destination is going to be that subnet resource. Here I could get real specific if I want to, if I only want to access, for example, web services on like 443, I could do that and any other ports we won't have access to. But for this example, I'm the admin, I can access everything, so we're just gonna keep it at all. Continue. This is just a home lab use case, so I'm not really gonna need posture checks, but those are super cool. Allows you to restrict access by device type, region, even specific processes running on a computer. But I'm gonna go continue, main subnet policy, all that looks good, let's add the policy. Finally, our routing peer. This is going to be the Ubuntu Pi. This is the device that is going to route traffic throughout our network. If I had multiple devices, I could select a group that they're in. So for example, if I just did Ubuntu Pi, it would add that one, but if I had multiple devices, you could do it that way. 
but we're just gonna select Ubuntu Pi and then go continue. Now all this looks good. We do have a metric here. So this is going to be technically the lowest priority, but since it's the only one, that's gonna be fine. We're gonna go add routing peer. And now our home office network is technically ready. Now, real quick, I mentioned I don't actually have that admin user. So if I head over here, I'm gonna throw myself in that admin group, save the changes, now we're good to go. And I will note, if this is your first time setting up the account, you may have an all to all policy here. If you're the only one using this and it's only to access your home lab, it's probably gonna be fine to keep that, but generally for proper zero trust and just to make everything a bit more secure, it is usually a good idea to go ahead and delete that all to all policy and manually define policies yourself to make sure that nobody has too much access. Now, while we're here, let's go ahead and give ourselves access to the Pi. So we're gonna go admin to that Pi so then we can actually establish a connection to it. Again, you get real specific with the ports, but just for this, I'm gonna go all, and this is admin to Pi, add that policy just like that. Let's run this command again, netbird status. You can see we now have networks. This is that subnet. So just as an example here, so I can show you that we can access our network and the network resources. Let's go ahead and actually exit out of here. So now we're back on our Mac. This is the IP address to the Pi. So right now I'm on my local network, netbird's not really running. And if I ping it, of course, this ping is going to work perfectly fine. But if I go over here and let's switch our network from our Wi-Fi to maybe my phone's hotspot. So that way we're not on the same network anymore. And once this connects, we should see this error out here, which we can see right there. No ping, request timeout. It, it's, it's not able to connect. But if I go ahead and open up the Netbird client here, let's go ahead and log in. So now you can see just like that, we are able to connect to that resource. And since I added the admin to Pi policy, we're gonna be able to connect directly to it with Netbird if we choose to using this right here. So if I just SSH with my username directly with the Netbird DNS name, hit enter, we're gonna say yes. Just like that, we are logged in. And of course we don't have to log in just to that Pi. If I exit out of here again, and let's log into a virtual machine that I already have on this network. Again, we're connected with my hotspot. So sell your network, not on my home lab. Let's SSH into a, another local machine and let's make that 10.173.10.30. This is a different VM, but if I connect to it, we'll be able to connect to it with no issues. The traffic was routed from our Pi to the actual device I'm trying to connect to, which in this case is a different Ubuntu VM. So really just like that, you're good to go. But there are a couple things I do want to note here. One is going to be under networks. If this Pi for whatever reason goes offline, disconnects, we have some kind of issue, we're not gonna have access to our network anymore. So that is why it's a good idea to set up high availability so spin up Netbird on another machine, whether that be another Raspberry Pi, an existing server, something else, add it as a routing peer here, and then you'll have access to high availability. So if the Pi goes down, it'll fail over to the next device based on your priority numbers that you set. Additionally, like I mentioned earlier, if you invite users such as family members, you probably don't want to give them access to your entire subnet. So you could do something like add resource. This can be my Unraid NAS, for example, and this IP address for the specific machine, which is dot 10. This time we're gonna go 32. So just that one IP address. This one I could throw in a group called NAS, and then just like that, add that resource, it's gonna be right there. And then what we'd want to do is actually establish a policy. So add a policy. This one, we'd want to create a new group, maybe it's called family. So family has access to the NAS, maybe this is only for a media server, so you give it TCP, and do the port like 8096 for just Jellyfin. And then just like that, when you actually invite the user, give them that group, they'll have access to this resource. So this is the media policy. If I go over to policies, you can see that there. So now we're building out our network exactly how we want it with granular defined policies, routing peers, all starting with a Raspberry Pi. So I'll go ahead and link to some documentation and Knowledge Hub article if you're interested in learning more and do check out our documentations to really deep dive into all the features and everything that Netbird has to offer. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.